Hi everyone, before I launch in today's video, which is how to recession proof your finances, I have three very quick things that I really want to share with you right now. Number one, we've moved house, we've moved to Bondi. So if you're wondering why my background is different, it's because the house is different. We have moved. So from this point on, you will be seeing more and more inside my home because most of my videos are filmed inside my home. Number two, I want to let you know that I am a licensed, qualified and educated financial planner. I'm not just some girl that knows a little bit about budgeting and cash flow and even investing. No, I have actually been a financial planner for almost, I'm showing my age here, 20 years. I run my own financial planning practice, which is 15 years old. And I have a Bachelor of Commerce with a major in economics and marketing. And I also have an advanced diploma of financial planning. So I'm here to educate you, to inform you so that you make smart moves when it comes to achieving your own financial goals and dreams. And then the third thing that I want to share with you right now, and that is my channel is universal. So even though you hear an Australian accent from a girl standing in Sydney, Australia, my advice is not just limited to Australians. It's applicable to no matter where you are in the world. My advice is universal. So when it comes to making investment decisions, savings decisions, you can feel safe and reassured that my advice is still relevant and applicable to you. I'm here to add value to you and your financial world and goals. So make sure you subscribe and that notification bell is switched on. Now, I want to talk to you about how to recession proof your finances. So often when we hear the word recession or even worse, the word depression, it creates a lot of anxiety, fear, and even panic sometimes. And so I want to share with you what you should be doing with your finances, your money management and your own financial goals during a time like this. And the truth is there isn't really that much different you should be doing right now because when we understand what a recession or depression really is, we understand not to fear it. And we can actually see the blessing in disguise, the opportunity behind all the noise as to how to leverage this to our financial goals and to our financial advantage. So let's get cracking. Number one, when it comes to a recession or even a depression, you must be managing your debt responsibly. Now, this comment is passed off all the time by financial experts, but what does it really mean? Well, number one, it means that you understand exactly who you owe money to and exactly how much. You check in with this amount and this person on a regular basis and keep a note or an Excel spreadsheet, it's even better, of to how much you owe them and when the next repayment is due. It also means you have, and as an absolute, absolute minimum, a minimum repayment plan in place so that you know that your debts are organically, naturally coming down week by week, fortnight by fortnight, month by month, because you are checking in on a regular basis, making note of them coming down. Now, on top of that, you should be also maximizing those minimum repayments within your budget restraints. Yes, that means having a budget, but I'm not going to tell you that in this video because you know that already. What I'm saying here is when you look at your debts and your minimum repayment plans, you should be looking at ways you can increase those minimum repayment plans to the maximum that you can afford so that you get that debt coming down faster and that debt paid off for good. Now, say, for example, I owe $1,000 on a credit card and my minimum repayment plan with a credit card provider is, say, $30 per month. Now, I would factor into my budget that $30 per month, but then I would go through my budget and go, actually, Canna, you can afford to be paying $100 per month, which would mean I would potentially pay off my credit card, depending on the interest rate being charged, in, say, 12 months' time. I do the maximum that I can afford to, keeping in mind and always remembering that whatever I put on my credit card as an extra payment, I can't get back. So that is why I always say, put on what you can afford within the constraints of your budget. Now, of course, with any of your financial goals, you should always have goals around reducing debt. And of course, having deadlines around those goals. So for example, with that $1,000 credit card example, I would say to myself, all right, Canna, 
I want you to be credit card debt free by July 2021, if not sooner. And then I would constantly be ringing up the credit card company or checking on online, how much money do I owe? Did that repayment go through what it's come down to and make sure that I was on track or going to smash paying off that debt in my life. The smaller or the, the least amount of debts that you have in your life, particularly during recession, the so much healthier your financial well-being is going to be. Two, emergency money. It is so important that you have emergency money. If you have emergency money, it is less likely that you are going to get back into debt. Now, a question that I get asked all the time is, should I be focusing on building up emergency money first and then paying off my debt or do it the other way around? Well, my advice is, generally speaking, is smarter to try and pay off the debt first because that is non-deductible interest. You're paying potentially 22% with some credit card companies on the interest. So it doesn't make sense that you're building up emergency money savings at say one or 2%. You're going backwards financially. Plus you've got to pay tax on that 2% interest rate earning, which is really annoying. Whereas this is after tax money. Ugh. So if you can try and pay off that debt as quickly as possible, but if you like, and you're really trying to make sure that you don't go back into debt again, but, and you want the immediate comfort of having some emergency savings, what I do is split it. It's about ratios. So for example, if I take that $1,000 credit card debt and I had a minimum repayment plan of $30 and I wanted to pay it off as quickly as possible, and I knew that I could afford to bump that up to say $100 per month, what I would potentially do is go, all right, I'm going to try and put $80 per month onto that credit card debt and put $20 per month into some emergency savings. That way I have peace of mind knowing that I'm tackling both my goals simultaneously. I'm prioritizing or having a bias towards paying off that debt faster because that's the wiser and more efficient thing to do with my money. But I also have emergency savings slowly building up now so that if something does happen like another emergency, I can tap into this savings and I don't revert back to this dirty, yucky credit card debt that I previously created for myself. So my answer is it's not one or the other, it's both. But you've got to work out the right balance that works for you and your budget. Because remember, you already have a budget. Now, and another question I get asked is, how do I build up emergency money? Well, you use exactly the same principles that I referred to in point number one as to how to build up emergency money. You set up a regular savings plan to build up your emergency savings, and you try and beef that up as much as possible. And just like with the debt, as you would with the savings, whenever extra lump sum money comes your way and you can afford to, throw that money towards your savings just like you would do if you threw that money towards your debt. You want to be slowly and steadily building up that emergency savings. Now, a lot of people will also say to me, Canna, this is so slow and boring, building up my emergency savings. Yes, it is. But there's a very powerful lesson in there for you. A very wise journey that you will go through. When you come out the other end, you'll get why it was so valuable. And that is because by regularly and slowly and steadily paying off your debts and doing like bursts when you can, and the same with your savings, you're building up very powerful habit systems. And also you're learning to respect and value the flow of money. And you're also getting a big awakening as to how quickly we spend money and how slow it takes to pay back money and to build up savings. So when you do next time go to spend, you think twice and shop mindfully before you splurge. Point number three, to recession proof your finances. And that is to start diversifying into other income streams. I'm really hoping that from COVID-19 that people are realizing they cannot be 100% reliant on the income from them physically working or from one single job. It is so important that we all have a skill, even if we're not necessarily using it all the time, or something that we can do that helps bring in extra money as a backup when we need it. Whether it be you've got a skill at selling things, whether it be a skill such as tutoring or walking dogs or house sitting, or another small business on the side or multiple small businesses on the side or even better building up income streams through investing because that's true or passive income it is so important that you use the time sooner rather than later to start investing into other income sources so that if you lose your job it's okay because you've got rental income coming in or you've got dividend income coming in, 
or you could focus on your side hustle and beefing that up, whether it be your small business or whether it be just a fun hobby that happens to make some extra money. Diversify your skill set, diversify your earning capability and capacity. And of course, yes, it may not necessarily replace 100% of any income that you've lost, but it might give you time, time allowing you to hang in there for a bit longer until you find a new job or get back on your feet again. It's something I promise you, you will never regret having as a full back option. And of course, when you have another income source, it means you're not going to be getting back into debt. And it means that you may not be necessarily draining down all those emergency savings that you've worked your absolute backside off to save in the first place. You remain financially independent. The fourth recommendation to recession proof your finances is to sit on your hands and do nothing or double up or double double up. What I'm talking about is your investment portfolios, whether it be your 401k plan, your pension account, or if you're in Australia, your superannuation accounts. This is not the time or the market for you to go, oh, I'm in a growth or a high growth investment portfolio. Look at this recession. This is really bad. I'm going to switch everything to a conservative or even a balanced investment portfolio. That is madness. That is stupidity. That is craziness. And it will come with huge amounts of regret because what this means is you are locking in those losses, you are crystallizing them. You are essentially jumping out of something that's already dropped and then parking into something that's dropped a little bit and then you will miss out on the market bounce back. And also all those very valuable passive income streams through dividends being paid in this time at this dollar very cheap marketplace. Craziness, this is not the time to do that. You either sit on your hands and do nothing or in fact, you have two options. If for example, you're in say, a conservative or balanced option, you think, you know what, the markets on average have dropped around the world 25%, sometimes even 30%. I'm actually going to change from a balanced portfolio because I think that's too conservative for my long term financial goals and switch it to a growth or high growth option. Now, in my opinion, professionally, and from a general advice perspective, I think this is a fantastic idea. I'll give you this analogy. Say, for example, we go shopping together and you buy, I say, a bed quilt and the bed quilt costs $200 and you take it home and you look at it and go, it was really nice, but I'm not hundred percent sure yet. And then tomorrow you, you look online and you see that bed quilt was $200. It's now down to say $100. You think, you know what? I've still got my receipt. I haven't used it yet. I'm going to return it back. And you do that. We head back to the store, you return the quilt and they give you a credit note, say of $200 or even a refund of $200. Now we're still in the department store and you're realizing, wow, there are lots of bedspreads on sale, even nicer ones. And they're not, they're even on bigger discounts. And I've got $200 refund here that I can spend. I could potentially buy two or three bed sheets or bed quilts or even some matching pillows and a throw. You've got great buying opportunity with that $200 refund. So if you have been umming and ahhing and thinking for a while, look, I think I'm invested too conservatively or I know I stupidly selected the default balance fund from my investment portfolios. Perhaps now is the time to explore switching from something that hasn't fallen that much to something that is much better value for money and is aligned to your long term financial goals. The third option, which is double double up, and that is to look at maximizing the opportunity of these discounts. As I said, markets around the world have dropped on average 25 to 30 percent. So you could say, well, look, I've actually got some money set aside and I'm going to start looking at using this money to invest. I'm going to make the most of this long term buying opportunity. You know, a lot of financial experts have been saying this could be once in a lifetime. I'm going to make hay whilst the sun shines and use this to start investing. Now, I'm not saying you throw all your savings into the market. Far from it. Any money that you invest is long term investing for at least 10 years, if not indefinitely, because my philosophy is all about buying and holding and growing and building long term growing passive income streams so that you don't have to work and you can live off your passive income. So when this department store that we talked about where we bought our bedroom quilt from is having a huge sale and you've got some spare money set aside for your long term financial goals, this is potentially a great time to be picking up some fantastic bargains.
Now, an important note I want to make for people who have already invested in the market and they're feeling a little bit sick or nauseous right now with the words recessions being blasted across our computers and our phones and our televisions, and that is ignorance is bliss. Now, I don't actually wholeheartedly agree with that, but if you know that your portfolio is well diversified, you've picked high quality investments and those investments match your long term financial goals. You do not need to be sitting in front of your computer screen looking at your account balances or your portfolio values all the time. It is a waste of your resources. It is a waste of your time and it is a waste of the space in your brain. Simply go back and focus on your long term financial goals. What are you trying to build? What are you wanting to accumulate more of? I guarantee if you do this, you'll either decide not to even look at your investment portfolio because you have faith in your investment decisions because they were based on educational knowledge rather than gut feel or listening to a friend or some sort of silly, crazy, you know, high risk advice. But focus on the long term strategy of your financial game plan. And then the fifth and final and probably one of the most important bits of advice to recession proof your finances and that is to keep working on those financial goals. This is not a time where you just go into hibernation and stop spending, stop saving, stop investing. No, 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 no. This is a time to flourish. This is a time to really strengthen your financial muscles, to learn more, to educate yourself more so that you can see the blessings in disguise. You can see the opportunities amongst us. You can really fine tune your financial strategy, fine tune what you want to achieve. And like I say, whether your goals be about paying off debt, building up savings or starting to invest or continue on your investment journey, you must make sure that you write your goals down. Your goals have a deadline. You check on them on a regular basis and you're always looking for ideas and opportunities to take yourself one step closer and sooner to achieving that financial goal. This is not a time to be scared. This is a time to be strong. This is a time to be resourceful. This is a time to be efficient and really leapfrog ahead with your financial goals and financial game plan. Now, as you guys know, I'm also on my own financial journey. I am still investing and I have been investing on a regular basis when I can afford to in building up my investment portfolio, that is building up my passive income streams. Not once have you ever heard me or seen me talk about my portfolio dropping in value. And that is simply because I really don't care. It is of no interest right now. What I am focusing all my time and energy is in building my passive income stream up. And one of my biggest financial goals is to build the thousand dollar project investment portfolios passive income stream up to $80,000 a year. So if you are feeling ready to invest or you are feeling inspired, I dare you, I challenge you, I encourage you to join with me in the thousand dollar project and use this opportunity with all this doom and gloom that's in our noise. But to see this as an intelligent, smart way to start investing and start building realistic long term financial security and independence for you in your life. All right, enough from me. Thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, always check out my Instagram channel because there's different video content through my IGTV videos for you all the time. All right, ciao for now.